Hi, welcome back to another episode of Thinking Inside the Box on Noah's Ark. Today we're going to talk about how to use an oscillator as a creative musical tool in your productions. Typically one tends to think as an oscillator as a mere test tool unless it's used in a sound generating module of a synthesizer. An oscillator is also used to calibrate equipment, especially in the analog world where equipment had to be aligned and calibrated before use. However, an oscillator can also be used in a different creative way when used in a subtle way in the background. It can produce different types of waveforms, including sine, triangle, square, sawtooth, and even white noise and pink noise. Today, I'd like to use a sine wave and pink noise generator, along with the sidechain capabilities of the expander or gate to enhance drums in two different contexts. So the first application is to enhance the low end of a kick by using the sine wave oscillator and a sidechain that triggers the noise gate to enhance the lower harmonics of a kick and fatten up the kick sound. The second context is to enhance a snare drum track by using a noise gate triggered by the sidechain of a snare drum track and using the pink noise generator to simulate snares, almost like a bottom mic. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into Pro Tools and I'll show you these two techniques that uses an oscillator in a different way. So let me show you those two tricks that involve an oscillator and a sidechain. So let's first listen to the drum groove on which we're going to apply that. So let's start with the kick. The kick sounds like this on its own. So it does have quite high frequency content that pierces through but lacks kind of that low end that we want. So what I did is on this track, we have the signal generator. So the signal generator is set at arbitrary frequency, uh, 50 hertz, which seems like the right frequency bandwidth area. So this on its own sounds like this, which is really low. And you may not be able to hear that on your phone or the playback device you're using. But if you have, you know, a nice set of headphones or some uh, monitors or subwoofer, you're going to be able to hear that. So this needs to be killed by the gate. So if I activate the gate, it doesn't sound anymore. So the gate is set at an appropriate release that sounds like the release of a kick drum. And obviously we need to set the sidechain of, of uh, the gate uh, to be triggered by the kick. So the kick is sent on this bus called bus 1. And we select the sidechain to be bus 1. Then we need to enable the sidechain to listen to that bus. So if we activate this, it sounds like this. So with the kick, without the sub, with, So it does give this kind of extra low end that's needed in this scenario. Now, some people want to set that frequency to the key of the song because 50 hertz is just arbitrary. But let's say that you want to set the frequency to the fundamental of the key of the song. So let me show you how you can calculate the frequency from the pitch. So let me open up the calculator. So I'm going to show you a formula that converts a specific pitch to a frequency. This formula starts with a, a reference pitch. So let's select 440 hertz, which is A4, as a reference. So the formula is 440, the reference, times 2 to the power of the number of semitones over 12. So the number of semitones are uh, the number of semitones you want to shift the reference frequency from. So let's say that the key of the song is E, right? So what's the closest E to A4? Well, it's E4. And E4 is five semitones lower than A4. So that uh, number of semitones is going to be minus five. So the formula is 440 times two to the power of minus five over 12. And that gives us E4. So let's calculate that first. So we have five over 12, which gives us 0.416 
and we need to negate that because uh, we're going five semitones lower. If it were five semitones above, then we don't need to do that step. So let's remember this number, and now we're going to do two to the power of that number, so 0.416666. We negate that equals 0.749, and this gives us a ratio from which the reference pitch is going to be shifted from. So let's multiply by 440, our reference, and this gives us 329.6, which is uh, the frequency of E4. Now, this is way too high for the signal generator for the sub, so we can divide by 2 to lower the octave. So this is E3, 164, still too high. Let's divide it again and get E2, so that's 82 hertz. That's pretty good, but we can go lower. So let's divide again, and then this gives us 41 hertz, which is the closest to 50 hertz, and should give us a big thump. So you can choose to use E1 or E2, 41 hertz or 82 hertz if you want, but that's in the case of E as a key of the song. So that's kind of how you calculate that, and you can put that frequency here in the signal generator. So that's a nice little trick to convert from a pitch to a frequency. Now let's uh, jump to the next trick, which uses the same signal generator, but in a pink noise mode. So this doesn't have, obviously, a frequency a slider, and it's going to work better than white noise. So let's put it on pink noise, and let's listen to uh, just the noise first. That's what the pick noise sounds like, and I filtered it and EQ'd it a little bit to make it sound a little closer to like a snare rattle sound. So now we're going to engage the expander gate, and that kills the sound, obviously. And the gate is set with an appropriate attack, hold, release to kind of simulate the decay of a natural snare drum. Let's listen to the pink noise in the context of the uh, gate. Oh, obviously uh, the sidechain is set with a different bus called bus 2 and the snare signal is sent to that bus 2. And then don't forget to enable the key sign, which enables the sidechain. So this is what it sounds like. With the snare, with everything, without, with. So it doesn't sound as convincing as the sub trick, but it does work pretty well when it's uh, really low in the mix. Let's listen to both. So that's it. Those are two tricks using the sidechain of a gate and an oscillator. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned a bit about pitch to frequency calculations, sidechains, and creative uses of oscillators. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you want more uh, music production techniques videos. And I'll see you next time for another video.